Hi again, and in this video we're looking at the formula for the Doppler effect. Okay, so the Doppler effect is just the fact that um, the observed frequency, the frequency that I'm observing, and the frequency that is emitted is different. They are not the same um, value. And to work out what that frequency that uh, we observe um, is, we take the this following formula. C being the speed of sound or the speed of the wave minus the velocity of the observer okay or the velo yeah let's call it the velocity actually let's call it the velocity of the listener minus the velocity of the listener divided by the speed of sound minus the velocity of the source okay now here you'll notice that this part will actually act as a multiplier a multiplier multiplier or maybe a better word is a percentage a percentage this part will calculate to something um, well it can be various values between zero and whatever uh, probably can be double I'm not sure but this will be a multiplier in other words it will tell me what percent of my of the observed, fre uh, sorry, of the uh, s frequency emitted, this is the frequency emitted, what percentage am I hearing? If I'm hearing more, it would be more than 100%, so 1 comma something. If I'm hearing it at a lower frequency, it would be less than 1, 0 comma something. Okay, and, and that is what I mean. Now, how do we get to this formula? That is what this video is about. And first of all, uh, we, we just need to know that there's a few things I'm going to be using in this video. Um, f first is this formula that I hope you are familiar with, that the velocity is equal to distance over time. Okay, velocity is equal to distance over time. And we also know that the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength divided by the period in other words the period is the distance between two crests uh, sorry the timing between two crests okay and this formula can also be expressed as lambda times the frequency okay because 1 over t is equal to f or f is equal to sorry uh, t is equal to 1 over f or t is equal to 1 and they are each other's inverses okay so t is equal to 1 over f this is going to be quite important and the first thing I'm going to look at is also a little bit of prior knowledge and that is relative velocity okay so let's say you are walking okay you are walking and there is a particle in motion right next to your head okay if the velocity of the particle it's called that velocity c and your velocity you are going to be the listener your velocity is the same then the velocity that you are experiencing or observing the velocity observed is equal to zero if the two of you have the same velocity it will seem that like that thing is just standing still next to your head isn't it so it will seem like it has no velocity even though you both have velocity the observed velocity will be zero why zero because we take the velocity that you are observing um, in other words the the velocity of the particle and we subtract your velocity from it and since you guys are in the same direction and it's the same magnitude that will equal to zero however if you were traveling in the opposite direction then your velocity must take a negative value and therefore you will now add the two velocities and if you were traveling in this in opposite directions at the same velocity then the velocity will actually be double because you would be adding two values that's the same okay I'm not don't want to spend much on that but this is called relative velocity relative velocity now the only difference here is that this particle is actually a particle on a wave this is a wave passing by you okay and if you are traveling the velocity of that wave that you are observing differs okay and it differs with this month, this is now the velocity at which you are observing that waves uh, uh, passing. 
Okay, now how about the wavelength that you are observing? That's what we are going to look at next. We looked at your f the frequency that you are uh, you observe. How about the wavelength that you observe? Why do I want those two values? Well, because we want to use um, this formula. From this formula, we see that the frequency observed must equal. So I want to get f the uh, velocity observed divided by the wavelength observed. So the velocity that I'm going to observe is that velocity. The wavelength that I'm going to observe, what is that going to be? Well, that's a little bit more complicated, but not that much. Okay, so imagine we have the source of the sound. There we go, and um, it is not moving. Okay, so there is the outside rink is obviously it's first wave crest and this is the second wave crest and it's just now emitting another wave crest okay so the distance in between here this distance is simply the um, the wavelength and it's the wavelength of the source okay and the time it takes for this particle to get from here to there that time is the period. Okay, period is the time it takes uh, um, for one wave crest to be at the next wave crest's position. Okay, that's the period. Okay, now what about if this thing is traveling? Well, if it was traveling, it would rather look like this. There's the first wave. The second wave that would have been here if my uh, object was not moving okay so if it was here but it is moving so instead it's now there so that actually the second crest is around here okay again not very pretty pictures but now you can see that if I was standing here if I had my ear right there now the observed wavelength that wavelength that I'm observing now Okay, that's the observed wavelength, is not the same as the original wavelength, the, the, the wavelength of the source. No, it is, it has lost that little bit there at the end. Let's color that in. It has lost this part here. And that part there, where it would have been, is, is due to the fact that my source has traveled. So, how far how far has this source traveled? In time t. Okay, because that's the timing between these two, two wave crests. How far has it traveled? And that's why we're going to use this formula. If I solve for d, I see d is equal to v times t. Okay, so the distance that my source has traveled is equal to the velocity of the source, okay, times capital T, because that's the time that has elapsed in, during that period. Okay, so that this length, lambda zero, is therefore equal to the original wavelength of the source minus this distance that we lost and that distance that we lost we said is the is the velocity sorry is the velocity of the source times the period now just to simplify it and you'll understand now why I'm doing this I'm taking out a t as a common factor it's not common here so I have to divide it uh, so that over t minus um, velocity of the source so that when I multiply it back, I get the same thing that I had in my previous step. Okay, but the reason why I did that is because we know from up here that t is equal to one over f, and and that lambda over t is equal to velocity. Okay, so that this is lambda over t, the velocity of uh, sorry, the wavelength of the wave of the source divided by the period of the source. That's just that's just equal to the sound, the the, the, um, 
velocity of the wave. So that's C is equal to C minus uh, velocity of the source. But T, I also don't want to use T. I want to use 1 over F. Now this T is, is the period, this original period, which is equal to 1 over F. But that's the frequency of the source. That's the frequency of the source. So T, this becomes that over Fs. Okay. And this all, sorry, was the observed wavelength. That's the wavelength observed. So that if I want to now continue, that my frequency observed is equal to my velocity observed divided by my wavelength observed. Velocity of observed is the velocity of the sound wave minus the velocity of the listener. In other words, the relative velocity at which the sound wave is being observed divided by, and here we have lambda zero, is the difference between C minus uh, the velocity of the sound and the velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. And this can just simply be simplified to our formula in question. Okay, if I divide with a fraction, I can just tip in times, and, and that's how I get to this expression. And that's it.